name is Sebastian from Precision EFI. Uh, I'm in charge of the technical support for the uh, Vipec RMK uh, Polaris plug-in ECU. Um, there is a lot of things you guys need to know before starting to use the product. Um, so I decided to make a quick start video uh, to show you like uh, some features. For sure I cannot go like through everything on the software because we need at least a week uh, full time to be able to show you everything that the Vipec can do and can't do. Um, there's uh, a lot of things you need to know about the fuel logic of the, um, uh, the ECU. Uh, it's totally different than other um, standalones. Um, I think it's way better the way it has been done on the Vipec and uh, there's a lot of feature that will help a lot the tuning so you can get like the, uh, an engine completely tuned like in, within an hour and a half let's say like perfect with it, within like a 0.5% error margin on the fueling and everything so it is like a really great piece of equipment but you will have to add some sensors to it to get like the good results out of it so let's say like the Vipec without a white band hooked up to it it's nothing so you need at least to have a really good white band on top to the Vipec to um, uh, get to use all the features that's gonna help you to tune it. So right now, like the first thing I wanna show you right now is how to physically install it. Um, I think everybody, I don't have like to spend a lot of time on it because I think it's quite easy. It's just like, like stock uh, ECU. After that, I wanna show you how to perform a firmware update and how to power it without, uh, how to be able like to connect to the ECU without having the engine running. Uh, once this is done, I'll just walk you through the software, uh, so um, it will be a little bit easier for you to uh, get in line with the software um, because I want you like to play with it a little bit before coming here for the course. So um, it will be um, a little bit faster for us. So we'll get like to the interesting stuff way faster when you'll be here. So just give me two seconds and I'll try to get the ECU online and everything and show you like how I do it. Okay, so now I just installed uh, temporarily uh, the Vipec ECU. Um, there's one thing, you got that communication cable on the back of it that just passed really close of the air box, okay? Um, one thing I highly suggest you is just install that communication cable before screwing all the screw for the ECU because you'll, you'll see like it's quite tricky uh, to get the, um, the communication cable hooked up to it while the ECU is installed so it will be way faster. So what I did, I just like passed that wire through the steering uh, hole right there so I have my communication cable going out of there so it will be way easier to develop stuff and um, uh, so if you want like to do like some field testing with the ECU, it will be way easier to just get that wire from there and uh, start from that. Uh, there is a way to power up the ECU without having the engine running. Uh, you just have to use the ECM power connector. It's a white connector, uh, really close of the oil tank. Uh, you got an orange wire and a brown wire. Um, so orange will be positive and uh, brown will be brown. Um, uh, so you will, you, you will need to have like at least a good car battery or a good power supply. I at least suggest you a power supply because uh, first of all um, it's going to be uh, way much stable for the uh, current and they, uh, they have like some safety so uh, if you have a short or something uh, the power supply will uh, cut the power so you won't blow the ECU. Um, so uh, right now I'll show you exactly how to perform the firmware update and uh, a, a quick walkthrough to the, um, I'll just install it finally because this is going to be the machine I'm going to make the test uh, with. Uh, so I'll just install it, uh, put the bag, the oil tank there and uh, we'll power up the ECU and uh, I'll show you how the software works. Okay, so now the ECU is installed at the uh, stock location. Uh, what I did, um, because the ECU will be supplied with a connector set like that, so those are little pins that you can add on the uh, stock wiring harness of the ECU, uh, of the sled. So, um, what I did, I used the... Each ECU will be supplied with those three sheets like that. So you got the 34 pin pin out right there. 
the 26 pin pin out and you got the uh, let's say like the expansion connector um, for the Vipec. So right now what I used, I used analog Volt 5. So I have one red wire that is going to be my white band or two sensor signal on pin uh, 12 of the 26 pin connector. And you have a sensor ground. That sensor ground is a black and blue wire on the uh, 26 pin connector. Uh, that sensor ground will be uh, the ground that you're gonna have to use for let's say every input that goes to the ECU. So map sensor, EGT, intake air temperature, uh, name it, uh, you always gonna have to use that sensor ground. You won't use the chassis ground of the ECU because you're gonna get interference between them and you won't have any accurate readings. So it's really important, don't mess it up. Black and blue wire all the time for sensor ground. Um, so I highly suggest you to just use like a, a quick a little tag machine or something so you can tag them. So right now I know like when the ECU is in place, I know this wire is for the map sensor or white band to sensor and this wire is for like an external intake air temperature or EGT or um, whatever temperature you want to measure. Okay, so uh, right now well, I'll show you how to perform the firmware update and power up the ECU and after I will get on the software. Okay, to power up the ECU, uh, I'm using my friend here, it's a, um, it's a power supply, uh, 0 to 30 volt, it's quite simple, a uh, simple piece of equipment, uh, it's around 250 bucks or something, so I really highly suggest you to buy those, uh, or a cheap one that can supply at least 5 amps, uh, because sometimes if the fuel pressure is low and you try to uh, power up the ECU, the fuel pump will try to prime the system and that will draw a lot of current uh, because of the fuel pump so if you don't have a good power supply uh, you might have problem like uh, having the ECU turn it on and off on and off uh, that could be quite bad for the ECU so I only suggest you to have a really good uh, power supply so now if I want to power it um, I have like I said before uh, ECM power positive and ground here's my power supply I make sure like everything is fine and lock so now the ECU is powered up. Um, uh, the first thing we have to do right now is check if we have the latest firmware on it. Um, for sure, uh, when I sent you all the first ECUs, uh, I have done myself the first firmware update, but I want you to check it anyway uh, because I want you to get used to it because the product will be constantly improving and you will have pretty much every time you want to tune, I think, uh, for sure there will be like some upgrades on the software and everything so you will have to get always the latest firmware uh, on the website and just load it in the ECU so it's quite easy. Uh, so uh, I'll just make a setup so you can see exactly what's going on in my PC screen and uh, I'll show you everything else you need to know before getting started.